Hey, hello, Calculus One. We're back to, uh, we're still here talking about 5-2, area under a curve. I did a nice long video a few minutes ago. Now, um, you know, so here we are. Uh, we got a function. We want to try to find the area from A to B, or just abstractly here. You divide it into, you make these rectangles. The width of each rectangle is delta x. And when I top it off like this, I call these inscribed rectangles. And when I use these inscribed rectangles, we call that the lower sum. And, you know, it's going to be less than the actual area. And I didn't draw a picture, but when I do the circumscribed rectangles, I, that's, that's an overestimate. That was in the previous video. Then we call that an upper sum. And, of course, that's going to be an overestimate. It's greater than the actual area. And, and the notation is this. It, you know, hopefully you understand this. Uh, uh, that's the width of the rectangle. You multiply that by the, the y value, which is the height of the rectangle. The height times the width is the area. You add up, that's a summation symbol. You add up the four rectangles or however many you got. What I wrote down here is you're adding up n rectangles. Uh, I equals 1 to n. Now, again, this is subtle, but when I use this capital MI, that's the upper sum. When I use this little MI, that's the lower sum. That implies I've got inscribed rectangles and circumscribed rectangles. Um, and the actual area lives in between there. And so we did a middle scribed rectangle. Now, I'm not going to notate that here. I want to show you where this goes here. But the, those, those, that was a way better estimate, of course. Um, so here's the idea that I didn't get to in the last video. I mean, here I am with four rectangles. How do you make this a better estimate? Well, you might say do the middle scribe. Well, you're right. But how do you do a better estimate with these inscribed rectangles? Well, do more rectangles. Watch this. If I just cut this guy in half and made myself another inscribed rectangle, I just gained that much area that was an error. Look at this. If I add a rectangle here, and do an inscribed rectangle, I just gained that area for more accuracy. Watch this one. If I go up here and make an inscribed rectangle, I'm doing more rectangles, but it's way more accurate when you do more rectangles, less error. Now look, there's still error there, of course. Maybe you should do more rectangles. Okay, go and draw more rectangles, and then you, you minimize the error. Uh, so I only did, you know, my first example, I only did four rectangles. Uh, when you do more rectangles, you, you've got more, you're adding up more rectangles. N is a bigger number. Um, uh, you, the delta X is smaller, though. You get smaller and smaller widths going on there. Uh, you get a lot more heights, and you just, you add up more rectangles, and it's a better estimate. Okay, so... Do more and more rectangles. This becomes a better estimate. <clears throat> this becomes a better estimate. You kind of squeeze in on the actual area. Now, I keep saying do more and more and more rectangles. What do you think I should, how many do you think I should do? I think I should take the limit as n goes to infinity. Right, I should do an infinite number of rectangles. And, uh, and I can do an infinite number of circumscribed rectangles, and I could do an infinite number of inscribed rectangles. When that happens, when you really take the limit as n goes to infinity, they really converge on the actual area. They actually equal each other. They are no, he's no longer, when you do infinite rectangles, he's no longer an overestimate. He's no longer an underestimate. They converge right toward each other and right in between is the actual area. So they equal the actual area. This now becomes the actual area when you do an infinite number of rectangles. Um, and... What I said was the actual area was this, an integral of the function with respect to x from a to b, what we call a definite integral. A definite, we did in 5.1, we did some indefinite integrals without any bounds of integration. With these bounds of integration, we, we, we call it a definite integral. The answer is a function. Uh, no, I'm sorry. The answer is a function that you evaluate from A to B, so the answer is a number. And guess what that number is? The area under the curve. 
some kind of an estimate for the area? No, the actual area under the curve. The actual area under the curve. And that's, and I'm trying to point out that uh, this old integral symbol here, it, it, it was, it was, it's not shaped like an S for no reason. It's shaped like an S because it represents this summation. But it's not just a finite summation, it's this infinite summation. So this sort of turns into the integral symbol. Notice this. The function is in here. The delta x, when, you know, when delta x gets really, 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 really small, when delta x goes to zero, which is what happens when we do an infinite number of rectangles, the delta x goes to zero, we tend to call it dx from the earlier parts of calculus. So I'm trying to tell you that this, all of this notation we taught you in 5.1, which was just an antiderivative, now it has meaning. It is the area under the curve. I'm trying to relate it to this infinite summation of a height and a width. And I think you can see it. Now, when you do this integration, you get what we call the antiderivative. When it was an indefinite integral, we would have plus c, and it would be this whole family of functions, plus c. But with a, a definite integral, we don't do this. I taught you this in the last video. You, you get the antiderivative, and you evaluate it from a to b, which means you plug in the b, f of b minus, then you plug in the a, f of a. What I just taught you here is technically up in 5.4. Um, so this is called the fundamental theorem of calculus. How do you do one of these definite integrals? And you find the antiderivative and you evaluate it from A to B, the fundamental theorem of calculus. You plug in the B, you plug in the A, and like I said, you get a number. And what does that number mean? It's, uh, what does that number mean? It's the area, the area under the curve from A to B. The actual area. There is no more. There is no more error. Uh, we've taken care of the error by doing an infinite number of rectangles. <clears throat> exact area. Let me call it exact area. All right. Good job. Do some homework.